guys, how's it going? So we are back down at the college today and we are going to tackle some of the planters. So we did 10, just the other day, 10 really big planters. And today we're gonna to be planting up 19. And we're gonna be around the student services building and two other buildings, a science building and a building called Barber Hall. Um, so we've got some entryway containers. We've got some containers around this fountain area right here. And we are gonna be planting up these beds too which will be really fun. They've got some fun stuff in here already. So this whole area was not here when I went to college here. It is so gorgeous. I love it when places incorporate peaceful areas for people to come sit and I don't know, like I would do my homework out here. How's it going? Good. So we're gonna start with four containers that go right around the fountain. Um, and then you can kind of see there's a container by that door. There are containers alongside this building here. So there's a 25 inch, a couple of rectangular ones and some 21 inch. And this gal right there, she's been pre-moistening all the old soil that was in there, which is so nice because it was just dry, like baked earth dry. Okay, so in our truck, we have got some gorgeous stuff. Aaron already took a bunch out of this one right here. And I just planned to have a lot of color, honestly. Um, I wanted to use things that get big that you don't have to use a ton of in every container, things that perform well for us. So you can see the rest of the stuff right here. And I also have some of, comp of the compost. We're gonna add some of this into that old soil. And that's what we did with the other containers as well as the planting beds, just trying to refresh that old soil so we don't have to replace all of it. I forgot to bring flower tone today, so we're gonna come back. Uh, later after we plant it. We're gonna get them all planted up We'll come back and we'll sprinkle some of that around in the soil and kind of work it in and it'll be just fine And it's kind of fun for me because I planned all of this stuff out like late fall early winter because we have to put our orders in so early And so until I started pulling all the plants I couldn't really remember what I had planned for each pot and they are fairly simple um, I'm just using like I don't know. I mean some of them are simple some of them aren't, I don't know. We do have some sun containers and some shade ones today. So uh, I don't know how you wanna do this. Start in. We'll start in, we'll start planting and we'll just try to bring you along for, for all of it. So we are getting close to being done. We've got 14 out of the 19 pots done. So we have five more to do, but they're on the other side of the building. So I thought we would stop while we're still here and show you all the containers we've done thus far. So you might actually recognize this combination. This is what we did in our planters along the fence line last year, minus the coral geraniums. So we've got a skyrocket penicetum as our centerpiece plant. And this plant gets tall and gorgeous. Uh, we've got three supertunia bordeaux around the outer rim there. And then we've got a white knight lobularia. Those get massive and it'll just trail over the fr uh, front beautifully. A supertunia limoncello to bring a little lightness on that side. And then a supertunia trailing rose veined, which I really liked these two together because the rose veined is definitely more pink and a little bit smaller. Next up, we've got this rectangular planter, which is 14 inches by, oh, I can't remember, 58 or so. Anyway, I went with three toucan coral cannas in the center. I had planned on putting five in there, and when I got to looking at it, I thought, oh, five might be a little bit too much because they do get quite large. Uh, we've got three Supertunia Vista Paradise, which is this very bright, saturated pink. We've got three Supertunia Bermuda Beach, which is more of a coral pink. And then I've got two limoncellos in there. So uh, limoncello, limoncello, 
the paradise kind of does this. They're just kind of willy-nilly. And then Bermuda Beach there, there, and there. This one is a 21 inch diameter. In the center we have a purple fountain grass, which as you know, it will get big and its plumes will probably grace the top of this light right there. Uh, a plum dandy alternanthera, which is a wonderful uh, alternative to like a sweet potato vine. They give you a nice dark color. I like the color of the underside of the leaves too, like a violet pink and then that darker purple, so pretty. And then there's a Supertunia black cherry, which I do like this tone of red. It's got kind of a cool undertone, and it goes really well with all the pinks I have nearby. And then a Supervena called Royal Peachy Keen. I did something similar to this in our vegetable garden containers, I think it was last year, and really enjoyed it. And then these three are repeats. So I did the same combination in this planter for cohesion, the same um, arrangement in this 21 inch container, and then that's another 25 inch container with the same as the first one we just looked at. Same with this one right over here. Okay, now let's take a look at the fountain area. All four of these containers I planted the same and they're all gonna be red, white, and blue. Kind of an Americana vibe. So the centerpiece plant looks a little small right now and it will grow bigger. There are seven of them in there. They are the Angel Face Angelonias, the Super Blues, and they get quite tall. I mean, they will fill in and they'll, they'll be like a really fun, like right in here, centerpiece, tall spiky uh, blue flowers. And then we've got the Super Tunia Really Red and Super Tunia White in there. And I did all four of them. So there's another one there on the other side of the fountain and right here. I thought that would be really striking. The last three are over here. Okay, so in this rectangular planter, I've got three Vermillionaire Kufia, which are these right here. They have the tube shaped flowers that are red and kind of yellow on the tips. Hummingbirds love this plant and they get quite large, as do the heated up yellow Gallardias, which I popped right in between the Vermillionaire big bright yellow flowers. They just are a gorgeous plant. And then I surrounded the whole thing with Supertunia really red and Supertunia honey, which is showing a lot of pink right now. It's gorgeous. This is just a really warm color display of flowers. I think it'll be really pretty right here up against kind of this lighter wall. This rectangular planter we kept really simple. Surefire red begonias. We had to keep it simple because I planned this as being a sun container. I didn't realize what side of the building it was on and I happened to bring a flat of surefire red begonias thinking I would maybe need them. I'm so glad I did. So we might come and pop some sweet potato vines, some bright green ones in here when we come and plant up the flower bed areas over here. Um, but I think they'll be beautiful on their own because they do get quite large. Like this will be a spectacular display here really soon. Last 25 inch container over here is a truffle of pink gomfrina in the center. They get massive and full of color. Three Supertunia Royal Velvet, deep saturated gorgeous purple, and then a Superbina Sparkling Amethyst. I really am partial to this one, I really like it. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the other side of the building and finish up the last five containers. These pots are interesting. You can see one of them is in the shade currently and one of them is in full sun, but I don't think either one of them get a lot of sun. I think we just hit it timing wise to where the sun happens to be shining right in between this locust tree and the building. Otherwise, I do believe they get morning shade and afternoon shade. So I'm gonna be utilizing plants that can handle both shady conditions and a little bit of sun. All right, all planted. I'm gonna get close on the one in the shade so we can see the detail here. So we've got a dipped in wine in the back, which as you know, will be huge. It'll fill this whole area up. That'll be kind of our centerpiece plant. And it is flanked by a couple of surefire rose begonias and then a diamond snow right there in the center and then a red hawk ipomea and a chocolate drop coleus just a lot of pretty colors and textures and we did the same thing in both containers okay so now we have three containers around this building and we're done Let me show you what they look like. This is the building right here. It's very modern looking. So I decided to just do a very simple arrangement right here, a purple fountain grass with four Super Tunia Really Red. Just very clean and simple. And I think that the red will look really good with the blue. And this is the only container up on this side of the building. 
The next one is around the corner. So this is a little side entrance right here, and this is a 21 inch diameter container, very similar to the last arrangements that we did in the shade, but I used a torchlight coleus. And Erin and I were just commenting on how little the coleus are, but how fast they grow. So that will fill in to be a nice big centerpiece back here. Surefire red begonia, diamond snow euphorbia, chocolate drop coleus, and a red hawk ipomia. And the last container is in the front. I think it's technically the front of this building. I'm not really sure which side is the front, actually. It definitely looks nice up here. I love the boxwoods right there. I think that's such a good thing. Like commercial applications, boxwoods and grasses always look really nice. This is the very last container right here. This one you can see is in full sun and we're starting to get some breeze. So hopefully my audio isn't horrible. I apologize for that. In the middle, we have a plain the blue salvia which those get massive. So this one will be really um, full right in the middle. Lots of beautiful blue blooms. And then around it, we've got three Supertunia honey, a Supertunia Bordeaux, a Peachy Keen Superbina, and a Plum Dandy Alternanthera. And that is gonna wrap it up for today's projects. I'm kind of glad we got it done when we did because I do think the wind is gonna start blowing a little harder. It's supposed to be quite a bit cooler tomorrow. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing those containers come together. We do plan on coming down here several times this summer and giving you guys updates, like maybe monthly, I think might be nice to see the growth progress um, and just to see how certain things did in certain areas. Uh, and it's possible we may be doing this uh, for more years than just this one. So this is a really good learning experience, a learning year to see what performs well in what spot. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.